If you've ever heard of the 80-20 principle, you'll know that it provides a way to get much more results out of less time and effort. And if you haven't heard of it, don't worry, I'll explain shortly. And the good news is that it definitely applies in music. But most musicians don't put it into practice, and the few that do almost certainly aren't getting, aren't realising just how widely it can apply. If you're not already applying 80-20, this video will give you what you need to start. And if you are, I'll show you how to get much more out of it. Let's do this. Hey friends, Mark Morley Fletcher here, and welcome back to the channel. And let's start with a, a very quick introduction to the 80-20 principle. And it comes from the Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, so sometimes called the Pareto principle, 80-20 rule, whatever. And he happened to notice in his garden that 80% of the peas came from 20% of the pea pods. And then he was looking at land in Italy and he saw that 80% of the land was owned by 20% of the population. And he went on to look at other countries and found that the same thing exists there. And, it, and it's basically a general law. You know, you can look at this and apply it to a whole load of other situations. So for example, uh, it goes much wider than just property rights. It, you might see in a, in a typical town that 20% of the roads have 80% of the traffic. And it's not exact numbers. We're not always talking exactly 20% and 80%, but it gives you that general idea of what's going on. And the really important thing about this is that, yeah, most of us realize that things are not exactly equal. It's not if I do 10 things, they're all going to contribute exactly the same amount to what I'm trying to achieve. Some of them will be more effective than others. But we very rarely realize just how skewed it is and just how much the few really important things have a massive impact. So if you want to go deeper into this, I would definitely check out the book, The 80-20 Principle by Richard Koch, which will give you a lot more about the theory behind it. But I really want to get straight into, well, what does this mean for music and how can we use it as musicians? So the first thing to take from this is that rather than just diving in and doing lots of stuff, it really pays us to think about what is important, what is going to get the best results first. So a bit of thinking time what's the best place for me to spend my effort is going to pay us back many times over in the end. And I want to open your eyes, hopefully, to just how widely this can apply. So we're going to think a little bit about different areas, different levels to which you can apply it. So here are the general principles where I want you to think about it. And don't worry, I will give you some a specific example of how this might work later. But you want to think about uh, the strategies that we're using, which of those might be the most effective to get where we want to go. And for each strategy, there are a number of different routes you could take to, to apply it, different angles you could attack it from, which of those is going to be the most effective. And for each route, what are the steps we're taking along that route? Because some of those are going to be more effective for the effort than others. So let's look at an example of what I mean by strategies and different effective strategies to, to get to where we want to go. So maybe where, you know, my big goal is a pretty simple one, to become a better musician. But what are the different strategies I could take? I could spend all my time working on technique and say it's all about technique. If I, if I put the effort, practice time into that, that might be effective. Or I could say, well, what if I deliberately surround myself with musicians who are better than me? Maybe that's going to inspire me to get better. It's going to motivate me. I'm going to pick up things from them. That might be a great strategy. Another one might be, well, what if it's not about technique in the practice room? What if it's about getting out and getting experience <laughs> performing? So that is really what's going to help me move forward. So you can see there's a number of different ways we could look at this. And the question is, which of those ones is going to give you the most bang for your buck, is going to be the most effective? So now let's look at an example of what a route might be to one of those strategies. So for example, let's just say I've picked the strategy of surrounding myself with better musicians. What, what could I do that might get me there? So I could, I could work on my, my technique again. I could say, if I get as good as possible uh, technically, maybe that's gonna want, make, make musicians <laughs> want to play with me. Or I could look at, well, let's just go down the connection route. Who do I know? Who can I hang out with to see if that gets things going? Who, what musicians do I know who I can ask? Can they introduce me to other people? I could work on um, just, just putting effort into making those connections. I could work on having some recordings, some really good recordings of myself that I could share with people. And then 
I can send them around to people and they go, yeah, I want to play with Mark or who, you know, whatever it is. So that might be a way of doing it. Or another one might be repertoire. What if there are particular people I want to play with and I know they have a particular repertoire, that's what they play. Maybe I need to learn that so that they say, yeah, okay, you're someone who can, who can come and play with me, who can come and hang out with us. Again, there are lots of different ways you could go about getting the same result. And the question is, which of those is going to be most effective? So now specific steps, what examples do we have of that? Let's say I've picked that I want to make good recordings of myself to share with people and hopefully build up connections that way. Well, it's probably not gonna be about getting them technically perfect, having the best video, if it's a video, and sound quality, nice, but as long as it's good enough for people to hear, that's fine. So that might not be the most effective thing. Whereas, Again, getting everything technically perfect, is that really needed? Well, again, it's nice, but as long as it's good enough for people to see the potential, I probably don't need to have it the absolute best performance. And there's a trade-off here between how long would it take me to get everything perfect and how quickly can I get something good enough out there that is going to actually make people uh, say, yeah, let's start playing. And then I can get to my goal of starting to play with these good musicians earlier. So again, it might be, it's not about getting it perfect. It's about getting something good enough done. So it's, it's looking at those steps. What do I need to do that? And wh which are the ones that, that really matter rather than a whole load of things that I could do, getting everything perfect, getting the perfect recording equipment that is, you know, has a little bit of an impact, but much less than the other things. And just to say that this is not me saying that the, the thing you need to do to be a better musician is to get around other musicians and to make recordings of yourself. That's, that's just an example. You could easily pick the other ones. And by the way, if you're finding these ideas that I'm sharing you, with you here useful, then I would love it if you just click the like button to like this video. Thanks. So where do you actually apply this in your music? because yes, the, the obvious things are a good place to apply it. So for example, just when you're practicing a particular piece of music, don't practice everything. Focus in on the bits that are gonna have the most impact. So the 20% of bits of the passage or the piece that is going to, needs the most work or is gonna have the most impact on the outcome. And again, when choosing what to practice, skills perhaps, techniques, which of those are the ones you're gonna use most often, the 20% of the skills that you are going to use 80% of the time, that is giving you bang for your buck. But that's, you know, that's all reasonably straightforward. I think we can do better. I think it's really important to look at wider concepts of what's really gonna help the music rather than just focusing on physical technique. And things get really interesting, I reckon, when you look at that. So I just made literally a few notes um, of things that might, might be relevant. So things like, what would happen if you could be more focused and alert when you practice? So putting time and effort into making sure you are totally switched on when you practice, that might give you a really big boost. Um, finding the right teacher, having the best person to teach you, take you through things. Maybe it's worth you putting a significant amount of time into researching teachers, choosing between the best one, because that might pay you back many times over later. Then we've got, yeah, finding the right musicians to play with. I kind of talked about that earlier, but again, it's not time spent on your instrument, but that might pay you back massively. Um, and another one might be training your mental skills for better performances. Is that something where, okay, it's not the technique that holds you back when you get up to play. Maybe it is what's going on in your head. And if you do want to do that, by the way, definitely check out my course all about that, Unlock Your Performance, which can really help if you think that's an area that would, would benefit you. Now, once you've done all the hard work of working out which are the 80-20 areas that you, you really need to focus on, you wanna make sure that your practice is not wasted. And there is one really important thing that the neuroscience shows that you just have to have in your practice uh, that you're not gonna learn, your brain is not gonna change without that. So I definitely recommend checking out my video on that next. And if you'd like the special practice and performance tips that I only share with subscribers, then head on over to playinthezone.com and sign up for the emails. They're free. I've been Mark Morley Fletcher. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.